Hello everyone. I've had the honor and pleasure of being friends with Bruce and working with him for almost 25 years. We are deeply, deeply saddened by his loss. We worked together at five different companies in Canada and the US. Together, like most people in high tech, we had our share of ups and downs, but our successes included an IPO and multiple company sales. It was quite a good run and Bruce played a huge role in it all. I remember trying to get Bruce and Angie to come down to Austin from Ottawa. Gosh, that was over 20 years ago now. I knew we had to get them committed before they experienced the shock of their first hot Texas summer. Coming from Canada, that would have been a non-starter. Being Canadian, everyone assumed Bruce was a hockey god and he was eager to play, but I'll never forget the look on his face when he saw the arena for the first time. It was a rodeo barn with trailers in a gravel parking lot as dressing rooms. The beer was colder than the ice we skated on but we had a good time. Bruce possessed a rare combination of strong skills, high integrity, a great personality, and genuine compassion for those around him. Time and time again, we would be faced with a challenging business problem, and Bruce would say, I'll figure this out. And somehow, he always did. People loved working with him. He fostered collaboration, openness, and respect. His roles were all consuming, but he always made time for family and friends. His involvement with the Boy Scouts, boating here on Lake Travis, the summer cottage in Canada, I could go on and on. Personally for me, I'm going to miss our chats over a beer the most. Whether that was in person or on Zoom, it didn't matter. He was a special and unique individual in so many ways. More important than a coworker, I'm most proud that Bruce was a true friend in every sense of the word. Always willing to jump in and help anywhere, anytime. I know I'm not alone in saying that. So on behalf of everyone he touched through his career, I'd like to say a sincere thank you. We're all better people for having known and spent time with him. To Angie, Jake, Will, and Kate, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Today and always, may treasured memories bring you peace, support, and strength. Good afternoon. We are Karen and Phil Barron. Our deepest sympathies to the entire Milne clan. Kate, Will, and Jake, we got to know your dad and mom during our mid-twenties. That sweet spot in life when we were grown, but not grown up. It's kind of funny that we hadn't connected with your dad earlier since I grew up just around the corner from your grandparents' house in Canada. Nevertheless, we made up for lost time bonding over a shared interest in sailing, which is why we're recording this message from a boat. This is the place that our friendship began, and for a few crazy summers, we had the good fortune to spend time together racing aboard the J-24 TARDIS. Larry, Michelle, ourselves, and this tall dude that Larry dragged along one day. That was your dad. We all got along terrifically. The summers were a series of road trips, six or seven weekends out of 12, up and down the 401 from Oakville to Montreal. Sketchy hotels, cheap drinks, and singing show tunes were all part of the package. Our most memorable, memorable adventure with your mom and dad was a road trip to Fort Lauderdale to join Larry on a shakedown cruise to the Bahamas aboard a cruising boat he had just bought. It began with a 20 hour sprint down the I-95 in a rental car, which gave us lots of time to chat and laugh. Arriving late in Fort Lauderdale, we found quite possibly the nastiest motel on the Strip and bunked down for the night, afraid to sleep for imagining all the critters in the place. The next morning, hungry and tired, we set off to find Larry and his new boat. Before starting the car, Bruce said he wanted steak and eggs for breakfast. 
We pulled out of the parking lot, turned right, and next door but one was an enormous sign reading, Steak and Eggs. We took this to be a good omen and a great start for the day. We found Larry and repositioned his new acquisition from the suburban canals of Fort Lauderdale to the swankiest of super yacht marinas to serve as our jumping off spot for the cruise. Sketchy hotels to swanky marinas, we were seemingly at home in both worlds. And in both places, your dad found interesting people to chat up and hear their stories. I think that's one of his gifts, to easily find a connection with people and to listen to them. First stop on the cruise was, an, the, was the island of Bimini in the Bahamas, where we found the Complete Angler, a bar that Hemingway once frequented in the 30s. And some of the patrons we met there might have also been there during Hemingway's time. We hopped from island to island, enjoying the sun, water, and each other's company. Too soon the cruise ended and we slogged north again, making a stop at the roadside attraction for which we'd literally seen 600 billboards, south of the border. Of course, the attraction was underwhelming, but we still had a gas camping it up in this place and left happy with a bag of firecrackers and some incriminating photos. Later that summer, uh, celebrating Canada Day in style with a decathlon of events, we found ourselves in the Byward Market with a mass of people after the main event on Parliament Hill. Bruce and I ducked into an alley to relieve ourselves and finding an opportunity uh, to make some mischief, we climbed a fire escape and ended up on the roof of the old fish market. Ever the prepared, Bruce emptied his pockets of the south of the border firecrackers and we proceeded to launch the fireworks over the masses below. And in that instance was summed our time together. Exciting, slightly mischievous, somewhat risky, but no one was hurt, and a good time was had by all. While we were all having a grand time, Bruce was also quietly crafting his career, and it showed that whatever he did, your dad did it 100%. From belting out the theme song to Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch on the Fisher Avenue bus, headed down to Parliament Hill on Canada Day, to restoring his MG, Bruce got stuck in. We moved to Vancouver, and not long after, Bruce and Angie moved to Austin. But we kept in touch and headed to Davis Locks whenever we were in town at the same time. Bruce was the obvious choice to be the MC at our wedding and was at home with both of our families. We kept in touch the last few years, mostly over text and FaceTime. Bruce was always so proud of you guys and loved to keep us up to date on your latest news. That's what drew us to him, that joie de vie, but also his intellect, drive and focus. It was infectious in a good way. And he showed us by example that we could do it all. Slowly we grew up Careers, then distance, kept us apart, but on those occasions, when together, we would slip right back into the sweet spot and those years melted away. The stories, the laughter, the ready smile, and the helping hand. Your, your dad brought it all. We're so sorry we can't be with you today to celebrate and share more stories of your dad, but we send all our love to you and your mom. Hi, my name is Chip Sampson, and I just uh, first want to say how honored I am that Angie and Andrew uh, had, had asked me to uh, say a few words about Bruce and about Bruce's uh, scouting experience and, and mine and several other people's experiences with Bruce in the scouting program. Uh, anyone who knows Bruce knows he's a leader of men and a leader of young men, um, and his leadership skills were never put to better use than through the scouting program. Uh, Bruce was an Eagle Scout advisor, and what an Eagle Scout advisor does is young men will come to him and seek advice on how to achieve the pinnacle of scouting, which is the Eagle Scout Award. Uh, Bruce was instrumental in helping countless numbers of our scouts and young men achieve that pinnacle. Uh, there's there's no telling how many young men he may have influenced that will become future leaders uh, in in business in politics in our country wherever they may end up uh, they will be leaders and it will be largely because of 
uh, Bruce's help and influence in that program. I will tell you a funny story about scouting and Bruce. Um, there's, there's, there's many of them. Bruce is a great guy, as you all know, uh, but he's a funny guy too. Uh, around that serious edge is is a, a, a kid at heart, I think. Um, and so we were out on a trek in Philmont. Philmont is the mecca for scouting uh, and hiking. If you love the outdoors and you love to hike and camp like Bruce did, um, this is a place to go and take young men and watch them in a 14-day trek transform literally before your eyes from young boys into capable, confident leaders, hikers, campers. It, it's amazing to watch the transformation. But um, the first night, we were out and did our hike and we were setting up camp and I set my tent up right next to Bruce. Anyone who's slept anywhere within a few feet of Bruce, maybe even in the same building, and possibly in the same neighborhood, um, knows what a seismic snore he can have sometimes. I didn't get any sleep that night. Um, I kept waking up to this noise and this rumbling of the earth and I didn't know what it was and I, and I finally realized that's Bruce snoring in his tent. So the next day we did our hike, we went to set up our tents and I just kind of sat back and, and I watched. I watched closely where Bruce was setting up his tent and as he started to put his stakes in the ground and pitch the tent, I turned and went about 30 feet in the other direction to set my tent up. Bruce is a sharp guy and, like I said, a funny guy. He, he pops his head up out of his tent, looks over straight at me, and he says, Was it something I snored last night? Just cracked up. Everybody was rolling on the ground. Uh, yes, it was something he snored that night before, and that same night, and every other night on that trek. I'll tell you... Um, I'm honored to have known Bruce, to be able to call Bruce my friend, um, and and I gotta tell you, when a thunderstorm passes over, and I hear that rumbling sound of the thunder, I'm just gonna pretend that's Bruce sleeping up in heaven. Hi, I'm Zach Poe. My family and I met the Milnes through scouting, where all of us scouts referred to Mr. Milne as Uncle Bruce. He was an exceptional friend and mentor to myself and many other people. I'm speaking for my dad, Ken, who has difficulty speaking. He and Uncle Bruce were good friends, and he, or as my dad would say, good buds. Here's what my dad has written about his great memories with Bruce. We met in Boy Scouts, and we both worked in the software business. He was so work-oriented that I always loved to call him the VP of important shit. That used to get a scuff. We had so many great times. We hiked 93 miles at Philmont Scout Ranch and had the youngest scouts, Jake and Zach. In Philmont, they have back-to-back -to -back toilets called the Pilot to Bombardier, or P2B. It's an outdoor wooden toilet over a hole in the ground. We shared a P2B on one trip, passing the toilet paper over our shoulders for the entertainment of other scouts. Our friendship, Samson, and I made him one and left it under his backyard cabana as a joke. Bruce and I demonstrated how to properly use it at a moving away party the Milnes threw for us in Austin, showcasing proper use in our underwear. Scary. That was a fine moment. We spent a lot of time on like Travis in Austin. We'd wait for it till dark and eat John Ratliff's famous thermos of meat. Here's a great story. We were sitting on our anchored boats one night drinking scotch. Someone called the cops on some kids and at a nearby boat who ended up getting arrested for possession of drugs. We just sat and watched the whole thing and drank that whole bottle of scotch. Needless to say, we slept on the boats, waking up with no hangovers by some miracle that morning. So that became our go-to scotch. He was so generous to open his lake house in Canada to us bums. 
During one visit with Bruce, me, John Ratliff, Andy, and many of Bruce's Canadian friends, we took down a 90-foot tree, cut a five-foot section, and stood it up in the campfire to make a tube of fire. It was, it was hollow in the middle, but full of pitch, shooting flames 20 feet high in the air and hitting the power lines. No damage was done, and the fire raged all night. This kind of thing was a typical occurrence. It's no wonder we didn't kill ourselves. Bruce came to visit me in Colorado a couple years ago. That was a perk of his company being in Denver. He came three or four times because he knew I couldn't travel. At the time, I was hiding my affliction from others. Bruce was the first person I shared it with, so he wouldn't be alone. He was an awesome friend, and I will miss him. Save me some scotch. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Mindy. We are from Austin, Texas. Our three families relationship began when our little boys, David, Ryan, and Jake, landed in Miss Dawson's kindergarten class together. David, a summer birthday, was the very oldest in the class. And Jake, also a summer birthday, was the very youngest. Our little community in West Austin was full of families like ours, mostly 30-something parents who had started out as young, cool, professional professionals in hip cities who chose the suburbs for good schools and a McDonald's with a playscape. Only some of us escaped the minivan. Our young families were growing with our kids into the same circles at the same time. We ran into each other at soccer practice and the grocery store. We volunteered together at the school carnival and wrapped up the day by ordering pizza to the neighborhood pool, helping each other's kids with their water wings and sneaking beers in for the grownups. As soon as Jake was old enough to be a Tiger Cub Scout, Bruce showed up in all of our kids' lives, along with a couple other dads, as a guy who thrived on sharing his enthusiasm for new things and his let's go for it energy. Most of all, Bruce delighted in teaching kids to love the outdoors as much as he did. Cub Scout Pack 72 and Boy Scout Troop 441 became community hubs in their own right as Bruce grew into his place as a community dad for all things scouting. Yet, Despite Bruce's roles as a founder and leader of this hub for families, he still knew the name of every kid in the pack or troop and their siblings. Most dear to me was the way he always took interest in and made a point of connecting with every kid involved, regardless of their skills, ability, communication style, or future in scouting. I never knew if this was intentional on his part or if this is just the way he was. Our kids all benefited from multiple sets of surrogate parents, but Bruce created a unique and lasting ripple effect on the kids involved in scouting and on us as a community. At the same time, Bruce wasn't doing this on his own. There were a few other dads in on the fun with him, and these guys turned into a group of dear friends independent of their children. From trailers mysteriously turning up at HEB, to wakeboarding nights, to, hey, can you help me with this project? Bruce was always willing to create some mischief or embark on building something new or rebuilding something old. When Bruce and Angie found their cottage near El Elgin in Ontario, we had to get used to their annual departure at the end of school as they began spending their summers in, that, in this beloved place. We simply referred to it as up north. We began to repeat our annual send off in June and we looked forward to the welcome home hugs in August. Our bonus was that Bruce was still in and out of Austin for work and to check on the house and maybe get a lake fix at his Texas happy place, home basing from the Ratliff family's vacation home at Lake LBJ. Bruce's pride in his Canadian heritage was always close at hand. He put it on full display one winter by wearing his formal dress kilt to a fundraising dinner for our school district. Much to his chagrin, a number of somewhat inebriated suburban moms who were, shall we say, a little more intrigued by the kilt, and even Bruce couldn't handle it. The kilt was not seen again for many years until a smaller event with three other couples. The kilt came out again in fine style with the added surprise of the other guys in kilts. A great time was had by all. As the kids grew into teenagers, our families became involved with another community hub, marching band. So much marching, marching band. 
Bruce Gamely did the Texas Friday Night Bleachers Ritual, aka football. The late night rides home and the early morning rehearsals as the family went in hook, line, and sinker. Jake, Will, and then Kate became the Milne French Horn Dynasty, eventually taking their show on the road north. Each summer evening for several years now, one or more of the kids have treated Davis Lock boaters to taps, a tender tradition that Bruce cherished and dedicated space in his trailer to ensure that it could happen. It's ironic that Angie asked me to speak about Bruce because I generally avoid public speaking. Bruce, on the other hand, always seemed so comfortable, even energized in the limelight. I never saw, saw Bruce speak in his professional life, but it was apparent that he was good at it because he told a great story. He had a story for what seemed like almost any topic. Will, Kate, and Jake, am I right? Whether describing the pitiful boots held together mid-hike mid with a duct tape wrap, recounting a testy neighborhood association meeting, or reminiscing about Canadian high school misadventures, Bruce could hold the attention of his listeners with a finely turned phrase or a clever play on words. Our three little boys, David, Ryan, and Jake, are all men now. While, of course, Bruce was Jake's and Will's and Kate's dad, he was a vibrant, encouraging, and fun presence in so many of our kids' lives. No doubt, there's a bit of Bruce Milne in a whole group of young men and women who grew up in our West Austin community. As his friends, we too will always remember and carry in our hearts his wit, his dedication, his fierce loyalty, and the twinkle in his eye. To Kate, Will, Jake, and Angie, you have a big Austin family and you will always be a part of our community. To all the Milnes, you have many hearts joining yours and forever holding a place for Bruce. We love you. Love you. Hello, my name is Steve Warm. Bruce was one of my oldest and dearest friends. Been asked to tell some stories about Bruce, and I think, like many, I could go on for hours reminiscing about uh, the wonderful times that we had together, but one sticks out in particular for me. Uh, it was 1981, a date I remember because we were both 14, and that uh, is somewhat important to the story. Bruce and I would come home at lunch occasionally and uh, climb into his beloved MG and take it for a spin around Tiffany Crescent, Tiffany Place. Um, even at 14, uh, I was confident with Bruce behind the wheel because, uh, well, Bruce could, could do anything. And uh, more importantly than that, Bruce would do anything for you. Uh, a, a true friend, uh, I know I'll never find, he was always an incredibly happy guy. Um, and I thought he was the happiest he could be through high school and after, and then he met Angie. And uh, his happiness doubled or trebled. And that, then I thought that was it. This is a happy guy and, and uh, he's found success and love. And then Will and Jake and Kate came along and his happiness just skyrocketed from there. Um, you guys, he was so proud of you. He would speak of you um, and just light up. Uh, it was a joy to all of us to hear about your lives through Bruce. And I know how much he loved you all. A lot of us have been talking about Bruce's laugh, his infectious laugh. Uh, something we'll all remember. You know, Bruce would laugh until he cried and he'd take us all along with him. And uh, there's tears of another kind flowing today, I know. Uh, but I know that the memory of the joy and laughter that he brought will live with us forever and hopefully give us some solace through the sorrow. Doug and Sylvia, Andy, Angie and the kids, I'm so sorry for your loss, and I hope you take care. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Morn, and I was lucky enough to uh, meet up with Bruce back in the early 80s. I've been asked to share a few entertaining stories about Bruce, but I honestly didn't know where to start. So after sifting through the 14 pages of notes that I compiled, I came to the realization that there were just 
too many. Andy, I'll send you the notes later. Earl of March was a great place to go to school. No cell phones, no social media to back up all those stories on those 14 pages, thank goodness. A bunch of us joined up and we created a magical friendship which still exists today. And Bruce was always at the center. His love of family and friends was above all else. Bruce was one of the most thoughtful, caring, generous, funny guys I've, I've ever met in my life. I loved his laugh. It was infectious. I will so miss that laugh. We chatted a couple weeks ago. We talked of memories and stories, and he talked of his love for Angie and Jake, Will and Kate, and he talked about how so very, very proud he was of his three kids. We both agreed that stories and memories keep us alive. I loved Bruce like a brother, and he'll always be alive in my memories. Hello everyone, my name is Roger Silverthorne. I had the pleasure of growing up with Bruce um, in Canada. Himself and me and Bill White and Dan Scott and Ian, we, uh, we were very, very close. Um, like the Outer Banks scenario, really. My kids watch it, I don't. Um, we spent much more time together than I think kids do today. I mean, we would go to school, we'd spend lunch hours together, we spent you know our, our time after school till dark, and, and we did it every day. Um, you know, academics at school, that huh, was one thing, but, um, but the social part we mastered. We had a lot, a lot of fun in high school. We went to high school in the height of that 80s music and music videos, and we used to go to school in the morning and walk to the Mellon's house at lunch hour, and the unfortunate part was we all ate our lunches that we packed during first period, so I, and I apologize, Doug and Sylvia, from the bottom of my heart, your grocery bills must have been astronomical. But we would go there and watch these music videos for the whole hour and eat a lot of food. Um, Bruce and I both worked at Canyon Tire for about $3.50 an hour. We worked in the automotive department and uh, Bruce made it easy on me. He uh, Every product, every part has an eight digit product code and Bruce memorized them all in the first week. So my relationship with him at work was yelling across the store at him, hey, what's the product code for this? And he knew it. Um, we both loved cars. I mean, he had his MGB and I had actually a car that went in the water. I had an old pickup truck and we uh, weren't formally trained in mechanics by any means, but we, um, we had a lot of fun and spent a lot of time uh, skinning our knuckles and getting greasy and you know cars might work in the morning and that afternoon they they might not start so that's how the cookie crumbled i had one old uh dodge half ton that you know we would go to school in the morning and then we would do the circuit we'd stop at bruce's get his windsurf and his wetsuit go to bill's house get his windsurf and his wetsuit my house and we'd pack this truck full of surfboards and wetsuits and then we'd go to our two afternoon classes and I'll meet in the parking lot and head down to Britannia Beach on the Ottawa River and we would windsurf boy for hours and hours and hours. We had a lot of fun. Bruce knew how to have fun. I mean, boats and dirt bikes living on the water. It's what he does now. It's what I do now as well. And I mean, um, if you're going to live life that way and, and enjoy it, he, he was a great guy to, to show you the, the route to get there because he continued to do it through his whole life and uh, I'll miss him dearly. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Dan Carruthers and I'm proud to have called uh, Bruce one of my oldest friends. We really started to hang out together uh, early in high school and um, like our friend Ian Ferguson who sadly passed away a few months ago as well, we met together in some of these early formative years that was kind of set the, set the stage for us for the rest of our lives. I remember going over to Bruce's house when we all got our new computers. I had an Apple II clone and he got a new Commodore 64 and uh, um, that would kind of set the stage for, for both of us for um, our involvement in the tech industry uh, later in life. Um, Bruce and I shared an old love of uh, prog rock together. Um, we discovered uh, one of our favorite bands, Yes, 
And I remember going to high school with Bruce one day. We had one Walkman between us. We had a headset splitter. We each had our own set of headsets on. And uh, we were listening along to an old Yes tune, singing away, trying to do our best uh, alto tenor uh, stylings of uh, John Anderson. Um, it was, we were talking about that just actually just a couple of weeks ago, as both of us were uh, together reminiscing about those uh, those old times, and each of us was diving back into our uh, our old uh, record collection. And I'm glad that we were able to use those moments to um, relive some of those times that uh, started 40 years ago. There were so many firsts with Bruce and uh, his family, uh, Sylvie, Bruce's mom. Uh, gave me an earring for the first time. Uh, that's a crazy thing for somebody else's parent to do for you. Uh, Bruce and I learned to sail together. Uh, we got into trouble together, um, which is a story best left unknown by the kids probably. Um, and we had our first jobs together. We used to, after hours, clean up um, in some of the local tech companies. And there was one, I remember, had a copious amounts of uh, helium tanks and he and I would suck that helium back and again do our best kind of uh, high stylings of John Anderson. Bruce, uh, Bruce leaves behind a, a wonderful legacy through his very successful children. I know he was so extremely proud of, uh, of all of them and I, just, I want to just extend my sincere heartfelt condolences to the, to the entire family. Um, it's hard for, for some of us old friends of his to lose, to lose Ian and Bruce uh, back to back like this. Um, I'm grateful that Bruce and I were able to uh, reconnect in, in person just, uh, just a few months ago. I know that he knew that he was greatly loved by his uh, supportive group of friends and uh, family and to Andy and Doug and Sylvie and Angie and all the kids, my sincere condolences. Um, Bruce has left his mark on the world and he was clearly and dearly loved by, uh, by all of us. Um, thank you, Bruce, for your friendship and your everlasting memories. We share a lot of great times together and I'm truly going to miss you. Dan Redmond here from the Earl of March Brat Pack. Just wanted to take a moment to send my sympathies and condolences to Angela and the entire Milne family on this really, really sad day. Um, Bruce has been a great friend um, for a long, long time. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get to see as much of each other as we probably wanted to, um, given our schedules and everything but the one thing I could always count on with Bruce when you met with him again it was like time had never stopped um, it was just we picked up where we left off and I think that's the sign of a great friend it's a sad day um, uh, we will see you on Sunday um, and, and give Bruce the farewell that he certainly deserves bye now Hi, my name is uh, Bill White. Bruce and I grew up on the same street about four houses away on Tiffany Crescent in Canada. We went through public school and high school together, along with many of the speakers you have heard or will hear today. Our time in Canada was unique. The group of friends that got together all those years ago were the beneficiaries of a lucky confluence of right timing, right environment, and right people. We became a band of brothers in those formative years. We were deeply privileged to be part of something that was bigger than any of the individuals in the group. I believe that Bruce was probably the first to recognize this and value it. This appreciation happened when we were all young adults pursuing the various opportunities that youth affords. Even in all the busy that comes with establishing your family and career, Bruce consistently invested energy in being the social hub for our group. He was the glue the curator, the archivist, the constant, and the fuel that kept our group close-knit for more than 45 years. The picture beside me is one of my favorite. It was taken a few years ago 
when we got together to celebrate our collective 50th birthday in Mexico. Just look at the joy in Bruce's face. He's surrounded by some of his best buddies and he's loving every minute of it. He was absolutely in his element. Bruce, thank you for the incredible memories you gave us and for your investment of time and energy into those that were closest to you. I'm looking forward to sharing the many, many great stories and memories of our time with your family. Some of the stories that come to mind are canoe trips, MG rides to school, making a bullet necklace, that actually did happen, and Bruce walking into our house, <laughs> which my parents had recently sold, grabbing a can of pop and wandering downstairs to be greeted not by my dad or brother or myself, but rather a complete stranger, the new owner of the house. Bruce, we all love you dearly and you will be sorely missed. Your memory will always endure as the stories will be told many times in the years to come. Bruce, my friend, we will all meet you back at the stuff. Hello everyone, Don G. Ludlow here. And let me start by saying that the only reason I really became known as Don G was because of Bruce. Someone else called me Don G, but it was Bruce who constantly referred to me that way, so it kind of stuck. I think like me, he always appreciated the humor and the fact that there was no real logic or reason to the G. Now we're all hearing and enjoying the tremendous things that we treasured and loved about Bruce. And I thought that I would share a bit about some of the memorable fun that he and our circle of friends had, which was on our canoe trips together. Now as a group, we've always delighted in telling our canoe trip stories to others, whether they wanted to hear them or not. And I have no doubt that Bruce would agree and see humor in the fact that we have one of the best situations for telling canoe trip stories right now, which is to say, a captive audience. So for those of you who have heard our many canoeing stories, I would like to confirm your knowledge with a series of questions about these incredible adventures that Bruce, Dan, Bill, Mike, Steve, Alain and I were so very fortunate to do together. Firstly, how long did it take my dad and I to paddle the exact same Rideau Canal route that Bruce, the boys and I spent more than three days paddling? Well, about five hours, but as I told my dad, we did a lot of side trips. And why did Bruce, Bill and I choose to set up our tent in about four inches of mud on a hill just outside of cars? Not at all proud to say, it was the triple sack. And when we were out in the middle of Big Rito Lake and Bruce asked Mike why he wasn't paddling and where in fact his paddle was, what was Mike's answer? I left it back there. And when Dan Redman was threatening to actually leave one of our canoe trips because even he had had enough of all of us, how did Bruce and I stop him from going anywhere? Well, we just took his little green bag with his wallet and money in it and went back to the tents. But most of all, why did we have so much fun on those canoe trips when time seemed to stand still and we just all floated along laughing and joking without a care in the world? Why was it so awesome and some of our best memories together? Well, because Bruce was there, bringing us all together, making us laugh and right at the center of the fun. Hope you can all appreciate just how much I would give for one last canoe trip together with Bruce and the boys.